so we are live so we are live all right all right so now so we are starting again starting again so we had some technical so had issues some technical and so we had to shift so to yogam music forum page forum and page. now we are starting now, our we're program starting again, our program again. So, so i'm very thankful, I'm very thankful that indrayud and parmananda has, has agreed to be a part of this, live, of session. this live session and, uh, and uh, i'll be first introducing that uh, parmananda uh, roy he learned from father uh, late pandit gopal roy and in the tradition of uh, panna babu's gharana and uh, currently a musician scholar at itc sr and later started uh, learning under pandit parth chatterjee and padmabhushan pandit ajay chakraborty ji at itc sugit research academy paramanando completed his masters from ravindra bharati university on instrumental music and he is uh, a b high grade artist in all india radio and also an empanel artist in iccr and next uh, i'll be telling some words about indrayud uh, indrayud has taken taleem under his father uh, pandit rajendra narayan mojumdar and also learned vocals vocal guidance under dr manushi mojumdar and represents senior my hai gharana uh, first indian to receive uh, salon di virtuosi award in new york and completed his uh, mba and perform all and across, perform the globe, across the globe including us uk and, and many other countries and he has been organizing, has been organizing along with his along parents, with his parents uh, the, big uh, the big festival in kolkata, kolkata called, called swara samrat festival, festival dedicated to dedicated swara samrat of ali, akbar ali akbar khan and that's all about that's all about uh, foreman in drive and, and i had to brief brief in their bio because there are more or uh, to be told uh, to about, be told them. about them uh, but uh, i'll slowly move, I'll slowly move uh, to israel uh, 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 what will be what your will message, be message for, for this, uh, for this uh, uh, situation uh, which we are going in going the whole the world, the is, whole now world is suffering now due to the pandemic and, the pandemic and i'll be just starting i'll be just starting uh, uh, start uh, asking you about this. asking you about this so at the outset i would like to thank olik for organizing this um, very impromptu adda which we say a yeah. very interactive yeah. discussion olik i am getting Perfect. messages that your voice is repeating you, there is a double or triple voice of yours which is uh, being broadcast please we take care of that yeah, so um, yeah, and um, so good to see you alik so good to see you parumananda two of my most favorite young musicians of our generation and um, yeah we are going through such a tough time an extremely challenging time perhaps the most challenging time the world has ever seen of late but um, i myself being a musician i am also working uh, trying to help as many people as possible through my personal contacts regarding uh, the facilitation of all the emergency services which is right now required for all uh, especially the health services which i am trying through my personal contacts that is the work which i am happily doing and i am really requesting to anyone who is watching who needs any any sort of help regarding the availability of any health Uh, health parameter or health factor right now regarding the availability of hospital beds ambulances oxygen uh, nurses covid patients uh, ke liye food like food for them so i'm trying from my own personal uh, capacity to arrange for them but in addition to that my main focus is on the psychological well being also because which is a very prevalent factor which is affecting the most of us currently 
<clears throat> so which is the psychological depression which is going on across the nation especially and i am trying my level best that uh, since we three we all three are musicians and we have this asset of uh, bringing mm. peace mm. and joy to others through our music to whatever extent we can but some joy we can bring to them or some peace we can yeah. bring to their lives yeah. or right. their psyche right. so i always try to motivate and i always try to bring some sort of peace to my viewers to my listeners whoever is watching me on my social media nowadays otherwise the people who come to uh, watch our live concerts but now it, now it is not possible through my social media handles i try to motivate people i try to bring some sort of peace to everyone but uh, i would definitely request all of you to kindly do the same i am sure you all do this it is nothing new in our lives but uh, the more you do the better it is for the entire world i think i believe but thank you for asking thank you alik for organizing this informal uh, discussion with you okay. and for okay. anand on over here and there are a lot more to come uh, just uh, we can uh, this is a casual conversation which i thought of having you know once a week we can uh, invite some of the young musicians like indrayit and paramanand and uh, we can have some conversations as there is uh, uh, nothing much to do during this pandemic and just to um, uh, help people like like uh, indrai told he is trying to help uh, by giving the contacts of the oxygen concentrators and uh, and whatever possible way he he tries uh, to help uh, the person uh, who is suffering and indrai i i would also want to ask you that uh, during this pandemic session you uh, uh, and of course your father and mother your parents uh, organized this very very huge event i think it was uh, the most uh, uh, you know mega event during this pandemic i don't uh, think that uh, any other event was organized in the, in that such large scale which swara samrat festival uh, like that it was organized in many several cities and where all the artists part participated from different cities and uh, so how do you uh, managed to do this and this was altogether a new idea this year to bring uh, artists from different cities and different places and stream it online in swarasamratfestival.com of course so could you please uh, tell uh, the challenges which you faced during this uh, organizing this huge event during this pandemic or any positive thing which you uh, noticed please unmute in the, in right right this muting and unmuting game shall continue uh, but uh, yeah there are more challenges i'm sorry there are more positives than the challenges regarding the organizing of this uh, this uh, festival not only this time but all the times like in all the seasons which we have done this was the ninth season but this was the first online season but uh, as there are more positives than challenges that is why we were able to do all the previous eight seasons and also this ninth season and same it was the case over here yeah the this time the dimension of the challenges the um, the magnitude of the challenges and the shape and the size and the depth was different altogether it was very new to us it was very new for any of us uh, musicians and organizers who are doing uh, this across the planet so um, it was <clears throat> very interesting because when i had conceived this idea and i discussed with my parents and worked out on the logistics with our team and every of us and it was very interesting because every aspect of it we were doing almost for the first time which was very different from all the previous uh, physical seasons which we organized here in calcutta so um this time what had happened is i'll not get too much into the details of the festival because it will take a whole lot of time it was like we could feature 105 musicians from across the nation 
in five cities we did the shoot in all the in you know state of the art infrastructure of video and audio and the venue and light set everything what what is done so initially we used to do in one city with one team now we are having we had five teams in five cities and out of the five teams i have never even met the four teams in the four cities so it was done everything virtually with me sitting over here managing the shoot managing the everything like from here with and my parents over here our team are everybody of us so we're doing here and me doing the edits of the video and final post production yeah. everything yeah. over here so i'll not go much into that but what benefit and what the positive we could bring about was number one that people all over the globe could watch this and they are still watching it since it is still there in our own website swarsamratfestival.com number yeah. two yeah. the tremendously depressing phase with which every of us were going through and we are still going through now right you know they could somehow get some rejoice somehow could they could rejuvenate themselves with proper and sorry good music with good dance performances and watching with their families and spending some quality time with their families number 3 it actually helped us musicians especially of our generation to reach out to a wider mass along with the maestros who had performed in swarsamrat festival so there was a there was a very balanced mix of musicians who are of our generation and musicians who are of the previous gener- previous few generations so, so it then, was very essential it is very interesting we always have had this over here in swarsamrat festival in the physical sessions for the last 3 years but this time it was since the numbers were uh, increased there were more musicians there were, there were 105 musicians and dancers so 50% were of our generation so it was a very balanced mix but with so many of us uh, so many of you guys who had performed who oli had performed and borom yeah. had performed yeah. so brilliantly and people all over the globe could watch it uh, with the proper acoustic with the proper video and audio uh, experience which was very essential so i am really hopeful that this has and this will always be beneficial for our generation of musicians all right uh, so nice of you in right and uh, i will just move on to parom uh, parom uh, i would like like to know uh, how do you uh, uh, deal with the situations after the pandemic special we all have this concept of having digitalized system you know everything gets digitalized even if you order some food it gets digitalized and if you do your groceries or uh, if you can perform facebook lives much more than you used to do before maybe one or two concerts uh, before the pandemic and uh, here during this pandemic we have almost five or 10 programs we used to do facebook live and we can see a lot of uh, artists performing in live uh, and there are many other uh, websites like vuc.com is organizing and also i can see in the comments uh, shilpi ravi ji who has mentioned the shanti classical series Uh, that was also organized uh, by uh, pandit kushal das ji and kalyanjit das so it that was, was beautifully so organized and beautifully yeah, yeah. executed yeah. shanti yeah. and yeah. a whole lot of other uh, festivals also but shanti was perhaps the first in the lockdown that period which had started with the online digital series yeah and later on yeah. many of many other organizations had also started yes yeah. yeah. so uh, i i just ask uh, padam how how do you see this change for amnand because uh, uh, you are a young artist and there are a lot of uh, uh, artists who are you know above 50 or 60 in indian classical music who uh, uh, some some of them don't think that this is a proper way of communicating with the audience because in indian classical music we need to communicate with the audience directly so, uh, so how do you see this for amnand hello olik and indrayud and uh, at the beginning i will thank my friend olik to uh, uh, as he has invited me here thanks for your invitation and uh, as your question was that uh, yes you know like we 
nobody was ready for that actually we uh, i still remember that uh, i heard uh, <laughs> i suddenly heard that we are going to have a lockdown and we didn't have a uh, we didn't have an idea of what uh, the lockdown is going to be but uh, after that started we had to you know find out other ways like you were mentioning that a few people believe that uh, yes it is not the way to communicate with the audience especially for indian classical music but you know there there was not any other option i believe and uh, for those who are musicians like us and those who are listeners also they also you know in this pandemic situation uh, the topic that indrive mentioned that mental well being is a very very important thing you know like uh, probably we all know about the netflix hotstar hoichoi in bengali all these kind of applications they were popular but pro probably after this pandemic they became more popular and more viewers started to watch it even i started to watch that so similarly for music like as we have performed a few online digital concerts where the uh, program the, uh, the complete concert was uh, you know it was uh, shot like a uh, you know like you have to play the program and you don't have any other option you have to play at once usually so that was a different you know that was a different kind of experience for all of us i guess and uh, definitely that we always prefer to have live audience in front of us while performing we love to hear that probably we love to hear the appreciation from them probably it uh, helps us to communicate with the audience because music is also you know there is a factor that the communicating with audience is a very important thing probably that is missing but another thing that suppose if a concert is organized in kolkata then people from kolkata will come only or in, in any cities but when it is online when it is virtually organized then as in drive mentioned uh, that about the swar samrat festivals people from all over the world could watch it and for same for the all other virtual concerts so this is a good thing you know this is a good thing that we are getting to have uh, our listeners from the abroad as well so it was a, definitely a you know in this situation i will not say that uh, it is the proper you know it is the proper way to interact with the audience but in this time we have no other options and i believe that this is also another platform that has you know come out in this situation which will continue to stay apart from the live sessions alik um i am getting so because you probably were, would be wondering why am i like smirking or i'm giggling over here i'm getting a lot of comments on my uh, uh, on my whatsapp and messages uh, from our friends which whom we know very dearly it would be yeah. lovely yeah. because if you just can click on the comment on your uh, over here on your screen of uh, of your stream yard it will come yeah, directly yeah. on the stream yard Thing, yeah. because otherwise we will not be able to see it from our own devices okay so it would be lovely if you can you know place the comment or publish the uh, comment over here it is possible just click on that right all right yes, yeah, yeah. i yeah. got it now got yes it. So i can see it yes. this mischievous guy this ayun shen gupto <laughs> and this <laughs> kalyanjit das two of our very dear friends two amazing sitarists are repeatedly yeah, uh, commenting and uh, would love to be uh, would love we would love to interact with them over here too yeah yeah, yeah. i will ask uh, all the listeners all and the viewers listeners all the friends to just comment and i have got the uh, you know the way uh, that i could place the comment here in the display so you can comment of course so uh in that uh, there are few questions uh, one of them is what is the advantage of having your father as your guru uh that's 
it is a very highly asked question and i am uh, i it is uh, it is very evident like you know since you have a father who is also your guru at home so i'm very fortunate about that because uh, there is very little scope of practicing wrong at home whenever he is around so whenever i am practicing you know it is we all know that the it is immaterial how long you practice or how much you practice unless you practice the right elements the right things at the right time uh it is uh, it is worthless or meaningless it is as good as not practicing so it is very difficult to practice wrong at home and since i have two of my gurus at home my ma and my baba both are my gurus so um that is one of the biggest advantages which i have secondly it is uh, very evident that at every after every performance i am getting a good evaluation whenever he is hearing and in these lockdown days so it is like i am not spared because he can watch every of my concert and he is watching everything and mm. uh, after mm. every performance he is frowning upon me and bashing me up regarding what have what have you played how this is how it should be and i'm so blessed that i get this as a blessing if, after course, every concert so, so um this is the second advantage the third advantage is like uh, you know whenever he is uh, there are two two characteristics of my of this person about whom i'm talking my father pandit tejendra narayan majumdar like whenever he is there he's he's walking around or he's staying or he's just doing the basic day to day activities he is my father but whenever he's with my instrument with his instrument or whenever i'm playing that he's around then or whatever something some performances is going on probably on youtube or we are just playing a cd or a dvd or whatever and we are discussing then he is my guru at that time there is no question of him being a father to me at that time he is a guru so yeah. it is there is an invisible boundary or an invisible time frame in which he swaps his characteristic or he swaps mm. his role in my life so it is he he just changes from baba to guru whenever something something musical is happening or something is going on and then he is resuming to become becoming a father so which is a very interesting dimension which i am pretty used to it and uh, yeah these are the basic advantages and the rest is all the same like you, you also have a guru you have lived with your guru and so mm. has uh, porom so it is the same yeah so nice so nice to hear from you in this i would just go to parmanando if you could play something for our listeners because we have already crossed 30 now i can see and there are a few comments as well so why don't you play for 2 minutes some you know a small piece you know okay then i will play the most common raga of this time playing a little bit of yaman nice nice I hope you hear the tantra
lower the volume of Tanpura. Sorry for interrupting. Yeah, no Please problem. Please lower the yes. volume because Ayanda is telling uh, Tanpura to come yeah. on. Yeah. Hope it's okay now. Clapping are coming from the comments. There are a few wahs <laughs> and ahs. <laughs> and, uh, and yeah, very, yeah. Nice. very very well played. Yeah, thank, yeah. You. Yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you, and thank you, Olik. And Indraid is sitting on a chair, so I, I am afraid that I could ask him to play something in Sarod. <laughs> the Sarod is uh, not even in the same floor in which I am sitting, so. Yeah, Some yeah. other time, yeah. definitely. Yeah, Kalanji yeah, uh, uh, That is why there is. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Pardon? Yeah. Pardon? Pardon? I was telling that there is an advantage of uh, having a flute player in your show that he can play any, uh, the flute from anywhere, you know, like sitting on the chair and sitting on the floor, everywhere else. <laughs> That's the advantage of having a flute player with you. <laughs> Uh, even that is the best even part of much more easier. You know, you know, no, no, vocal you have to take care. You have to take care <laughs> about your um, uh, of your voice. But no. you don't yes, have to exactly. carry your voice separately. You have your voice. Anyway. How heavy is the flute? Okay, Babai uh, Kalyanjit has <laughs> yeah. Uh, Kalyanjit has a valid question. It would be lovely if you just can broadcast and just publish it over here. Yeah. We pay to online OTT platforms for watching the content, but in case of ICM, how many of our audience are ready to buy tickets? I think the basic funda is the same, getting big sponsors. The other logic of a mass selling ticket, mass ticket selling is like a dream. Would love to hear from all of you. Yeah, so lovely if you guys start and I'll conclude about this topic. Uh, yeah, I think you can uh, uh, start with your opinion, Indra Yudhu. Because uh, I will, I will from, definitely. Yeah, from my part, I, I think I that. Definitely. Yeah, yeah. From my part, I think that uh, it, is it is wise to, uh, uh, you know, there is a, a session going on nowadays. It has been started since a month back. Uh, VUC.com is uh, trying their best to uh, raise funds for the for the artists. They have six artists at a time in a particular day, and they are doing this as a series, and. Uh, uh, every week there are six artists at Thursday night, 8 p.m. Indian time, and uh, people could uh, interested could buy the tickets. And we can tell that it is uh, better to have a uh, artists like uh, your father. You know, uh, in the, what I mean, artists like your father, Pandit uh, Tenjendra Nayanji, and uh, also. Uh, we can have someone like Pandit Ajay Chakravarti or someone like uh, on that stature and uh, promote the young artists in the slots. So I think uh, by that way it would be easier to uh, what Kalanjit says, you know. Forum? 
yeah i think yeah it's a very valid question and uh, you know uh, i also think the same that uh, kalyanjit also mentioned that uh, yes uh, don't see that much like people paying uh, for watching netflix and other ott platforms for watching movies but not ready to uh, you know buy tickets for watching the uh, indian classical music contents but it's very difficult to say why but um, probably it's because of the attitude of the um, audience maybe i don't want to hurt anybody but probably they believe that classical music uh, is a thing that uh, you is you know like it is only possible for the live concerts but you know like if you watch a video uh or like it it is also i believe it's also same for like uh, those who uh, love to watch you know like theaters live theaters and it's like same like watching a, a live theater and a movie then why you cannot afford to buy tickets for watching indian classical music live this is a very valid question i think uh like very less concerts are organized like uh, swar samrat festival also shanti that shanti that series which was arranged by kalyanjit and um, anit kushal das ji and i think that is that could probably be the most important topic why people are not ready to pay for that probably that quality like we have seen many performances on facebook like that anybody is coming live on to uh, on facebook the video quality is not good the audio quality is not even good then people lose interest this is what my opinion is so if we have to do it obviously first we have to come up with a very good presentation of good quality audio good quality video probably it can increase the awareness and probably change the yeah. attitude of the audience you this mean to say the, uh, to to improve the production of the uh, video and music uh, audio visual you know like exactly. in swarasamlat we had a, a very unique and uh, very high class audio and video uh, but it is not always possible to uh, you know invest and do it on that way and uh, like we used to do casually in homes you know in our homes and uh, maybe sometimes if there is enough budget and we can move on to the studio and uh do some recordings there and you know so i would uh, ask uh, inrajit to tell his opinion about this okay you know dealing with this answer will take uh, me hours okay so because i am myself a first hand um, stakeholder in it because uh, i myself do along with my family and my team for for so many years now but um, uh, what is you know there are some hard facts which we need to realize number one is like the market size of indian classical music if you compare it with the market size of films it is pretty less we have to understand that so in terms of the revenues in terms of the financial model involved with the classical music industry is minuscule or pra- practically negligible compared to a film's uh, financial model and the number of people watch a film on a good day or on a good time and the number of people watch a classical music performance which is the hard fact we have to understand this you know there can be Sorry. debates there Sorry. can be arguments but that this is the hard fact you know but on the contrary i would not go into much details about this i would come to the optimistic part of it uh i have been organizing swara samrat festival along with my family for the last 9 years but every year you have seen the turnout of people like you all have come or it ha- it has always been full and this year it has been like so many people watched it paying online so i am sure like if the right product i'm sorry the right uh, music and the right uh, presentation is done in the right format and people are made aware about that people do buy so i myself have 
been experiencing it for the last so many months and for probably a year now about this last uh, season so i'm sure i'm pretty optimistic about it but of course the involvement of finances on any proper classical uh, concert or a proper classical performance and the amount which is generated from the tickets that disbalance is only because you know a production in a production there are so many fixed costs which are always there which cannot be neglected but uh, compared to the number of viewers of uh, or number of audience which who are coming here there will always be this disbalance that the number of viewers multiplied by the ticket prices can never match even probably the 20 to 30% of the production cost involved in a performance just because now performance cannot be replicated of, you know you cannot have the same concert in 10 cities at the same time right you cannot have it or you cannot have uh, one artist performing at the same time in bombay delhi bangalore kolkata hyderabad ahmedabad no it is not possible so it is always there that one person is is sitting in one auditorium and the number of auditor and the number of seats in auditorium can accommodate that is the maximum quantity multiplied by the ticket price and that is the amount which is generated for any concert right for from the people who is attending who are attending but so we shall always have to depend on the sponsors because the fixed cost involved in the and the recurring and the other costs the variable costs which are involved in organizing a festival is always going to be way higher than the revenue which is coming from the tickets but in films or in sports which is very pro, which is very prevalent because okay let's come to films when film a film is being uh, Uh, is being released the same film can be shown at the same time in all the cities across india and pl- into number of shows there are so many shows for number of maybe 7 days 10 days a month two months whatever into number of uh, attendees into number of price uh, and the price for the ticket you want to say something no go ahead no. oh okay so that can happen on one particular day at one at at one time slot only so that is so we can never compare that with the films secondly if we compare with sports there are so many huge channels and and investments from the uh, other you know sponsors regarding a sport event maybe football hockey i'm not even considering cricket you know cricket is huge in india but in football hockey uh, whatever other sports i mean kho kho whatever Kabaddi. other sports that is that is also uh, the scenario like it is based on sponsorships because the number of uh, stakeholders in a st- in a sport is way bigger than the number of stakeholders in any classical music concert it is the hard fact so we have to understand this but on the coming on the plus side of it uh, in the digital media right now for the last especially in the last 2 years we have actually could break we could break the the physical barrier to the accommodation of a, an auditorium and we have actually come out of it so that more people across the globe can actually watch by paying now there is a there is another aspect of it uh, which is actually barring uh, us organizers from actually coming out with a brilliant series of concerts every time is the psyche of the people over here they are so used to watching music for free they are so used to watching this particular flute which param has played right now for just a minute and a half it is okay yeah. over here but you yeah. can watch the same flute by n number of musicians on youtube for free so uh, this is a big challenge this is a big challenge because for that particular uh, video of that particular artist on youtube which the audience is watching for free if the channel is not monetized the artist is earning nothing out of it right but 
for the sport yeah. suppose yeah. if anybody can watch a sporting event that person that artist has already i'm sorry that uh, sportsman has already got his uh, due of shares through the sponsorships while the sporting event was organized so there is a a big uh, thing which is going on which all which which is the hard fact and hard reality about it but we shall always have to be focused on the positives we shall have to come out with newer ideas which i'm sure kalyanjit and yeah. i have discussed about it so many times but it was good that we could discuss over here in front of a, a whole lot of people yeah yeah so we have just got a comment uh, from pushpita dev uh, from audience perspective uh, life is always at rush only few people prefer to invest time to analyze and take the feel of dedicate, delicate grammar involved in classical music uh, uh, whereas movies light music are simple to understand and more accepted as amusement so what your uh, what is your opinion about it parom yes uh, i believe this is somewhat true this is somewhat true like uh, probably that is why it is called classical music and that is why you know like classical music is not mass music probably but as what indrayud has said very aptly that uh, you know yes probably it also depends on the ambience that a, a listener or audience is uh, brought up through like uh, for uh, you all and for me also like we like however busy we are we are always uh, looking for like you know good music so probably that is the you know it comes from the society i believe and you have to accept that that the numbers of uh, uh, the the number of people who, are, who will appreciate classical music will be much less than uh, the number of people that will classical uh, that will um, appreciate other forms of class uh, other forms of music probably live music or movies but i also believe here i would uh, just add a comment that we should not also forget that uh, uh, we should also try to like keep keeping the, the music intact keeping the i will not say the grammar the flavor of classical music keeping the flavor of classical music intact we have to we should also try to you know like produce such music which can be you know like appreciate appreciated by the mass like if i mm, uh, you know for example pandit hari prasad chaurasia look how popular he is I, i'm not you know undermining anybody else but probably flute is a, exactly uh, you know accepted uh, flute sound you know like it's like more people probably prefers it i don't know why or i don't know how but ustad zakir hussain pandit ravi shankar ji i will uh, i would also love to take their name we should make yeah. them idol that how they have you know like made ustad ali akbar khan sir ustad ali akbar khan sir lot of great musicians like that how they have made indian classical music reach to the mass we should also not try to forget that Uh, yeah but uh, parom i think uh, uh, the musicians from the past you know past uh, last 50 years or so a uh, time has also changed so uh, do you think uh, it is very evident uh, that we also change our music to some extent you know yet yeah, not change changing the music you know like we have to keep the grammars intact like rag yaman cannot change but you can show your own thoughts on it and probably we can like there lies the you know uh, point of performance that if we go to any indian classical uh, uh, concert then we can see that when there is a very impactive session in any particular performance where there is a very exciting tihai or very nice like long note so people those who are not even you know understand even those who don't understand all the intricacies of the grammar of indian classical music they also enjoy that so i believe that we have to point out those points which are really impactive so here lies my point that impact of we have to find out the 
points where there is impact like always if i um, suppose you are singing a bandish or i am playing it i know that yaman is this and this and it has these notes and all these mm. notes but it doesn't create good impacts everywhere like the yaman hariji has played you know i i cannot play that why because you know that there is the musician musicianship that is what i was talking about that finding the impact and bringing that out and i believe that people will really enjoy that if we can if we become successful in doing that in doing that onek hoyeche porom baja no no i just want israel israel ko bolchi jodi are hobe oi byapare are relax first you know we have heard so much of uh, this boring discussion yeah. i would love to have watch porom play something all right so that all it right. you know pieces our hearts and then we can try uh, in fact porom uh, then i will request you to play chankara 2 minutes Shankara directly. <laughs> yeah, I just remember you performed Shankara in SSF last time, so it's better to have a small glimpse of that performance. How can he give a small glimpse of that performance? But he can of course show the, <laughs> that particular raga. Of course. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> By the way, I am getting to uh, see comments by uh, Ram Prapunura. Thank you so much, yeah, Ram yeah. Prapunura yeah, yeah. and Pushpita. Pushpita is my college friend. We were in the same batch in Saint Xavier's College. And how are you, Pushpita? I'm sure you're doing fantastic. Yeah, Pushpita, 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 you know classmate she was telling me that so good to have pushpita's comment here wow good very good so nice to hear that pushpita is learning from you is it audible yeah nearly
thank you. Wow, wow, wow. Brilliant. So, uh, Indra, uh, next question is ready for you. Uh, Ali is uh, so serving the questions uh, like you know like uh, like it's like he has kept it uh, you know ready like dishes after dishes. Yeah, yeah, one by one it's uh, coming through you know, like you have biryani and then comes the uh, papar and then the chutney and then rasgulla like that, something like that. Anyway, so let's move on to the question. Uh, Indrayu, do you feel that? Uh, this process of creativity in Indian uh, classical music, uh, musical artists, of course, artists, uh, this process of creativity, uh, especially for the young artists who are learning, uh, 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 getting talim under the guru and also performing correspondingly, uh, does it add any pressure, you know, because the expectations from the audience is always to get something new out of it and people expect something new. So, uh, what do you think? They should stick to their basics, uh, their talim, and uh, uh, don't worry about creating new music. Or you know, what is your feeling? Uh, when you are learning from a guru and uh, and you are actually uh, trying to uh, Im uh, trying to replicate whatever knowledge you have imparted, you have got it got from your guru and you are trying to execute it on your instrument or vocal, whatever, it is very evident that you are most likely to copy your guru for a good number of time. But uh, it is very essential also for any musician to, to I feel that to uh, focus on those, uh, those techniques or those uh, uh, elements but to present it in your own style because every of us is different from the other even though he can be my father and i am his son our hand textures and everything we are two different human beings all together so it is very uh, evident that uh, you know although how much i try to copy him right in in these uh, phase this phase of my life it, yeah. The execution yeah. will always be different from his, from my father's uh, thoughts and my father's uh, presentations. So I prefer on uh, playing my music, but I want to. I play whatever I have. I am being taught. Okay, but of course, along with this, there comes mm. a huge role in my uh, musical upbringing and musical psyche of all the other music of Sarod, of sitar, of vocal, of flute, yeah. of shenai, everybody, that their impact which they have created on my psyche, on my mindset. You mean to say it is life. a spontaneous process? It's or very spontaneous. Yeah, yeah. It is very spontaneous. So, you know, that uh, like 70% whatever of whatever I'm playing is being taught, is ha has been taught by uh, my father to me and uh, like and I have been somehow being able to manage to cope with it and been whatever I'm being able to ex uh, you know execute. But 30% also comes from the musical influence of other artists on my musical upbringing. So and my own uh, thought processes and my own uh, on and bring trying to bring the life into my music. So that is very different from that shall always be different from my father. So yeah. that is how I think that uh, I am trying to uh, improve myself. Most importantly, uh, Indra, uh, what you agree with me that it should be a spontaneous process. It should not be a, an attempt to be different. Yeah, that's what I absolutely. Think. So the yeah. you know this attempt of being cautiously different can yeah. sometimes yeah. ruin the performance, yeah. if not always. So, so this and this is a very organic thing. You know, we cannot explain in words. We can never explain in words these things. So, it has to come from within. It can never be uh, taught or can be explained. Yeah, exactly. 
Similarly, I have a question for Param. You know, maybe we are uh, moving towards the end of this session, and uh, I would ask Param to answer me uh, that flute as an instrument is uh, uh, what about 150 years or so? You know, as an Indian classical instrument, uh, flute has been played, uh, you know, in different way before, but uh, in uh, Hindustani music. Uh, as far as far we discussed earlier, uh, it was Gaur Goswami ji and uh, Pandit Pannalal Ghosh ji who brought in the actually the actually yeah. it was uh, Pandit Pannalal Ghosh ji. Gaur Goswami ji right. was uh, one of his disciples, but Pannalal yeah. Ghosh ji who was uh, the yeah. pioneer person who brought flute into the Indian classical music zone. Yeah, uh, I have uh, the question for you. That is. Uh, Already we have, uh, you know, living legend Hariji with uh, us, you know, who uh, brought this uh, flute to a different level, you know, altogether. Uh, my question is that, uh, how do you see this forum? Uh, how, uh, what is the scope of any kind of experimentation which, uh, uh, which could be done and uh, uh, as this is not a very old instrument uh, in Indian classical music, so what is the scope of this uh, experimentation uh, in flute? You know, experimentation definitely there uh, have been a lot of experimentations which have already been done. The first, uh, uh, the first, uh, you know, like. Uh, Panna, Pannalalji did a lot of experiments with his flutes and he firstly played the bigger flute and he brought that uh, idea of bigger flute to concerts because you know uh, earlier flute was only used as an accompanying instrument so there used to be small flutes only so but in Indian classical music to bring that you know depth depth of sound and the depth of ragas and depth of music he created the bigger flute that we are playing. So it was first his invention and we are uh, still following that. But you know, I believe that be it uh, a new instrument, be it an old instrument, there are always scope for experimentations. Like you can do experiments with any, any instruments that you are playing. But uh, for flute, yeah, it's true that it's one of the newest instrument. But uh, I think that the like that standard has been set. It has been firstly set by Panalaji, then it's been set by Hariji, Pandit Hari Prasad Chaurasiaji. So yes, definitely there are scopes and uh, they are um, you know like as every instruments have their own limitation. Like uh, sitar, sarod, every instrument have their own limitations. Similarly, flute also has its own limitation, but we always we have to try to overcome that, overcome that, and try to, you know, bring the music as much as possible. We have to try to do that, and it's been done a lot. And we are really in this generation. We are really blessed yeah. that we are getting a like kind of you know standardized, like you know, a standard setup for flute like uh, the flute in in terms of flute performance flute uh, like flute making everything else but a lot of work um, you know has been done by the um, like uh, masters like pandit panala ji hari prasad ji yeah yeah that's very obvious and uh, do you think that uh, it is essential to uh, use the accompaniment uh, to some extent uh, extent like I used to discuss with you uh, previously about the, accompaniment. the you know how to use the accompaniment like if, if, if you could add swar mandal to it or if you could add uh, something else you know how do you say that no, swar mandal can definitely be used it is uh, like um, swar mandal can definitely be used and many artists have already used swar mandal in a flute performance and I think uh, in any instrument which doesn't have many strings like sitar or sarud have many strings so that their swarmandal may be counterproductive 
but for flute or violin we may use swarmandal yes swarmandal can be used and flute support is like you know it's a very common for any flute performances like we have seen both panna babu and hari ji sitting with his students and those uh, students they always try to bring that sur that tonic note you know with that and follow in the yeah. probably in the lower octave you know that could that can be done yes yeah yeah nice so we are almost uh, sitting towards the end but we have a request from uh, apratim bhattacharya uh, he tells indra yud play something as well so uh, soon actually you learned uh, vocals from your mother i see in your by that so why don't you sing two lines mute mute and mute it yeah i had learned when my vocal cord didn't change for good okay so and i had uh, the kid voice and yeah. later on what has happened what i am learning is like i am learning the gayaki ang and i am transporting it to my saroj so it's not that i am learning uh, in vocal par se she's uh, guiding me in vocal gayaki but i'm just translating it to all right saroj. all right all right and i also see that you are learning from pandit uh, suvankar uh, i am of late i am very fortunate that i am getting the guidance of tabla maestro one of our most favorite of all time pandit yeah. suvankar banerjee kaku uh, and uh, yeah i am learning i am getting a few uh, of his uh, guidance you know i can take very little whatever he is teaching but whatever i am getting to take within me is a huge treasure for me great great uh, so uh, i think we had enough and just a last comment from sourav goh sourav goh uh yeah the, what this son so, of uh, pandit jyoti goh and uh, sourav made writing, the right comment only enough of speaking please uh, get to your forte actually i am hosting this show so i think uh, doesn't matter uh, we are hosting each uh, other it is okay. not wise to showcase uh, it yourself when you're absolutely it's absolutely wise to sing all right so i'll be singing something and uh, end uh, in today's session uh, param could you please uh, switch on the sound on the sound this is called outsourcing by a musician <laughs> you you will sing in d sharp right or d uh set d sharp from i hope you can hear the tanpura from here uh, yeah lower lower the sound you know it's too much yeah that's fine that's fine you know uh, actually i would think for just one or two minutes so it's a very casual so i don't start with anything heavy so ah <laughs> ah
सखेर मोर बिरह कछो न सुहारी कारी बिजुर चमक जियारा मोर तरा पाव आवे सखेरे मोरे बीर सुन सिया दियारी कारी बिजुरी चमक जियार मोर कर Wow! Thank you, thank you, Paul Beautiful. and uh, Indrayud, uh, for joining. And I'm very optimistic that uh, we shall continue these kind of sessions every week, at least once a week. And uh, uh, also, I, I can see a lot of comments. Uh, so I can see your interest. The all the listeners are interested in uh, having this kind of sessions. So I uh, obviously uh, continue this once a week at least. So again, once again, thanks to you, Indra, for his time. You know, uh, it was in a very short notice, and uh, hopefully you like that. And uh, also, Parom, thank you very much for joining. So for today, we are ending the session. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ali. Bye. Bye.